Chitar Mandu. Other than that, he is one of our national heroes. Can you tell us more about him? Sure, but I want you all to listen very carefully, okay? Norman Washington Manley was born at Roxborough, Manchester on July 4th, 1893. He was a brilliant scholar, which meant that he did extremely well in school and later went on to be a lawyer. It was Norman Manley's expertise as an attorney in the criminal, civil and appeal courts that laid the foundation for what was to be his life's work in Jamaica's political development. It all started with his advocacy for the country's banana growers who wanted to establish a banana shipping company, but this was strongly opposed to by a foreign-based exporter in Jamaica. Still, that did not stop Manley from intervening, and in the end, the export company set aside one cent per sum of banana exported from Jamaica to form a fund called the Jamaica Welfare Limited. And what do you think these facts say about the character of Mr. Manley? Means he was not only concerned about the farmers or the poor, but he was also dedicated to helping them. That's true. And in 1938, when a series of industrial actions broke out, you know, workers went on strike. Norman's cousin, Alexander Bustamante, who is another one of our national heroes and who is also a strong defender of the poor working class people, was arrested. And guess what? Alexander Bustamante asked Norman Manley to represent the striking workers who were determined that they would not return to work until Bustamante was released. Norman's response would forever change the course of his life. And that night I made up my mind and I put an advertisement in the leading newspaper in Jamaica that I would represent all the striking groups in the country. His ability to negotiate the cause of the poor resulted in Bustamante being released and the workers few recalmed, at least for a while. By this time, Norman Manley had reached a turning point in his political career. And it was then I realized that the time had come to make a new political move. We had had 300 years of British rule without self-government. Then it looked as if it was about time we started to take an interest in our own affairs. Miss, what he meant by new political movement? Was he going to stop looking out for those workers? No, 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 no. He still cared for the people, but he wanted more for them. Remember in 1938 when he formed the People's National Party? Yes, miss! But the people, especially the poor working class, were not allowed to vote. So he set out on a mission to change that. Norman Manley was deeply involved in the fight for a new constitution for Jamaica and was among those who helped to bring the country to full adult suffrage in 1944 from a reluctant British colonial rule. Manley strove for self-government in a climate that was largely hostile to the idea and after Jamaica withdrew from the Federation of the West Indies, he set up a joint committee to decide on a constitution for separate independence for Jamaica. With great distinction, Manley led the team that negotiated Jamaica's independence from Britain. Throughout his political career, Norman Manley was elected chief minister after the 1955 election and later as premier in 1958. Are you enjoying the story so far, guys? Yes, Miss. Miss, what can you tell us about his personal life? He was married with children, one of whom is Michael Manley, and he later became the Prime Minister of Jamaica. Although Norman Manley led a busy life, that did not prevent him from finding the love of his life. And sometime between taking up his Rhodes Scholarship to the Oxford University in England and enlisting in the British Army during the First World War, he met and fell in love with Edna Swithenbank. She was an artist and sculptress. And in addition to Michael, the two had another son, Douglas, who also served as a government minister. While helping to create a multi-party system in Jamaica, Norman Manley made the needs of the people the focus of the government. After giving exemplary service to his country, Norman Washington Manley retired from politics in July of 1969. He died in September of that same year at the age of 76. 
and thereafter was declared a national hero. Well, students, that's all the time we have today to talk about our national hero, Norman Manley. Sadly, we have come to the end of our class, but I have some pictures I would love to share with you. <laughs>